So Luna has been out for a while on PC and her armor and weapons change the meta almost as hard as KT's does. The Lunastra has 42 weapons to pick from, so which are the ones that you want? Well, worry not, I'm Jinjinx. And I'm Tuna, and we're the, the Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Math, Math Guys. In this video, we'll be teaching you not only how to be more effective when fighting Lunastra, but which weapons you should keep. So let's start with not carting, because you do 0 DPS when dead. Personally, with normal Luna, we don't really think you need defensive skills. The Arc Tempered version that releases later is a different story, but all of normal Luna's damage is easy enough to play around. But if you are struggling and do want to run defensive skills, run Health Boost 3 first, it is the biggest return on investment. Then maybe eat for Elemental Resistance Large, a 15% damage reduction on fire damage is very nice. Now let's talk about how to deal with her mechanics. To start with, don't stand in the fire. While seemingly benign, many of her attacks cause these puddles of fire to explode. These explosions hurt, have massive hitboxes, and tricky timing, making them hard to iframe. More so, even if you have a shield, the attacks are unblockable, so you'll need guard up if you want to block them. These puddle poots are probably the most difficult part of her kit to deal with. Not only are they unblockable like we just mentioned, but they can very easily cuck you from the side when you're trying to block. So even if you have guard up, if you are blocking at the wrong angle, they'll still hit you anyway. As for how to deal with the puddles, the closer you are to her, the safer you are. This is for three reasons. A. Luna never places puddles directly underneath of her. She always places them slightly outside of her own hitbox. B. When the puddle poots are triggered, they go outward. This means that if you are between her and the puddle, the poot will not hit you. C. Her long range attacks that she aims at you when you are at a distance produce a lot more puddles. Now that doesn't mean you should camp the head, it's a really bad idea. Ideally you want to hug her body between her front and back legs. If you do this, then you only have to deal with her aura burn. Which is why you'll run health augment on most weapons. Health Augment lets you heal through her Aura Burn by recovering 10% of your attack as health. However, the health return on Bow and Spread Gun isn't very good. The 10% healing only applies to one pellet or arrow per shot. 2-5 to five healing per attack? Not worth it. Also, make sure you always pop a Cool Drink. She has a passive Aura Burn that is negated by Cool Drink. Of course, at higher Aura levels, she has a second Aura Burn that is not negated by Cool Drink. But only getting hit by one of those is much better than getting hit by two. Next, bring Astera Jerky. Astera Jerky heals all red health points you have instantly. Most of her fire-based attacks are damage over time. Which means that they deal red health damage, which Astera Jerky heals instantly. It's especially useful for surviving her supernova. Speaking of her supernova, the best way to survive is to simply panic dive. If you dive the initial wind pressure, then you can just repeatedly spam it through the whole supernova. But if you do get hit by a puddle poot during the supernova, just stay down and you can iframe through the rest of the attack. And finally, if you are already far enough away, just get the f*** out. You can outdistance it fairly easily if you're already at a range. Don't forget to pop the Astera Jerky afterwards too. A final piece of advice. Don't run Rocksteady. Have you ever tried using Rocksteady against Bagel? I have. Exactly. Rocksteady means that you can take multiple instances of damage at the same time. It is entirely possible to eat an attack and its subsequent puddle poots and die instantly. And even if the attack doesn't hit you, if two or three of the puddle poots do, you're dead. Instead, run Fireproof. Fireproof Mantle makes Lunastra's damage laughable, relatively speaking. And it runs for three minutes, which will protect you for a lot longer than Rocksteady anyway. Next up, let's discuss killing Lunastra faster. After all, you're going to need a lot of her parts and gems to make her gear. The most important thing to understand first is Lunastra's hit zone values, because these are a large part of the reason why Luna's fight is so unique. So Lunastra has what we like to call sh** zones, because all of her easily reachable hit zone values are trash. Sever weapons get the short end of the stick, only her wings and tails count as weak points for sever type damage. And at 55 on the wings and 45 on the tail, these are really bad. Yes, that means her head is not a weak point for Sever, so Wex does not apply to it. Now you may be thinking that the damage numbers are orange when I hit the head, 
Well, we explained this more deeply in our video explaining hit zone values, but the short version is that 40 hit zone values give you orange numbers, but do not count as weak points. So what do you do? Well, the general strat is to trip her, then hit her wings. Unlike Teostra, Luna doesn't trip from head damage, only from damaging feet or breaking horns. But that can only happen below 25% health. Note that sever hit zone values for the hind legs are 5% higher than the forelegs. The hind legs tend to be safer as well, so focus those. Impact damage is a weak point on the head with a juicy hit zone value of 60. And she KOs extremely easily. So you may be thinking that Hammer is a good matchup too, right? Well, not really. There are two issues with Hammer. First, hitting her head is extremely denagerous. She has a lot of very spazzy, low wind-up moves that she uses when you are at her head. These can be very difficult to deal with in melee range and lead to getting hit a lot. Second, she KOs easily, but KO does not lower her aura level. Trips, on the other hand, do. This means that even though you're getting easy damage down due to the CC, it doesn't slow down her supernova or kick her out of high aura level where she is more denagerous. Finally, shot type damage gets weak points on the tail and head. At 45 and 55 hit zone values respectively, the tail is a better choice for higher damage, although, if using elemental damage, the head is a better target. This is because her elemental hit zone values are 10 higher than they are on the tail. This generally makes it a better target for elemental shot types like bow and elemental ammo. Luna is mostly weak to ice damage while her dragon hit zone values are only 5 behind on each hit zone. Personally, when using elemental weapons, I always use ice for those max deeps. While there is an argument to be made for Elder Seal, we find that she does the same amount of supernovas, just spread out a little more. Also, yes, you can put out her puddles with water damage. No, this does not make water a good elemental choice. It can take a few attacks to even put out a puddle, at which point Luna will have replaced them anyway at that point. And her water hit zone values are 0 to 7, which are terrible, she's basically immune to water damage. It's like trying to use a bottle of water to put out a kitchen fire while some asshole keeps throwing gasoline at you. You should probably just go beat up that dude instead. Preferably with a block of ice. So with all of this information, what are the strongest matchups against Luna? Bo is, unsurprisingly, the strongest matchup. The mobility allows you to easily dodge. You've got high damage due to the head and tail both being great weak points for shot type. And Bo is still the best KO weapon in the game. Yep, even better than Hammer. While puddles can block your arrows, you should never position yourself to have a puddle between you and Lonastra anyway. If you do, her next attack could easily blow the explosion in your direction. Light Bowgun is also strong. Either an Ice Light Bowgun or Normal 2 Rapid Fire can work very nicely. Also, using your Wyvern Blast, you can set up some sick dunks. Ironically, the best Light Bowgun for dealing with Luna is her own, the Bagel Luna Light Bowgun, aka the Blaze. It runs Ice and Dragon ammo very well, which is good for making quick work of Luna. Also, it has decent Normal 2 Rapid Fire and the best para ammo in the game. And it's just good enough at stickies to land one easy KO on Luna. Otherwise, the KTR-8 Spread Light Bowgun is the next best Ice Light Bowgun, and if you don't have that, then make sure to grab the Kushala Deora Hornet instead. Charge Blade is arguably one of the strongest melee matchups with Luna. You get the best of both worlds, great defense with guard point, and high motion values to deal great damage. Impact Files can KO her easily, but more importantly, they deal hit zone value independent damage. So it's super easy to trip Luna as long as you can find windows to SAED her legs. Just don't forget to run guard up. Next up is Wide Gunlance. Gunlance is also strong because shelling damage is hit zone value independent. Normally, shelling gun lance is fairly weak compared to swing lance because shelling scales poorly. Swing lance, best lance. However, because Luna has bad hit zones, shelling performs well here. In short, spam the legs until she falls over, block when she's about to hit you, repeat until dead. As an added bonus, gun lance can add some quality of life since damage is calculated from a small pool of skills. Personally here, we recommend wide gunlands over long gunlands, at least if you're solo. 
As we mentioned earlier, Luna has a lot of really spazzy attacks. So at least in our personal experience, using long gun lens against her is quite a bit riskier. The long animation requirement of your charge shelling makes it a lot more difficult to block in time when she uses something particularly spazzy. If you're in a group though, long gun lens might actually be better, since it does have higher pure shelling damage. And of course with split aggro, you have a much easier time dealing with her attack pressure. Next up, Longsword is kinda good. It's one of the better matchups in melee in my opinion, but it is a lot more skill reliant to use well. If you can aim your helm break as well, you can get a lot of free ones on the wings while she's using certain attacks. But it's a lot more difficult to land wing helm breakers than you might think. And honestly, because of how spazzy her attacks are, a lot of your helm breakers just end up being really YOLO. Foresight also deals with her attack pressure very well, but if you miss time it, the super armor on the return stroke can get you one shot by the puddle poots. Finally, we have the dual blades. The short range forces you to hug her body, which, as we mentioned earlier, is the safest place to be. Sheer mobility makes it easier to dance around Luna. However, Dual blades don't get to deal much damage until the trip happens and you can access her wings. Alright, that should arm you with everything you need to know to farm Luna efficiently. Let us know in the comments if this helped or if we missed anything. Now Luna's gear is one of the biggest meta changes in the game since KT for most weapon classes. In fact, the sticks meta pretty much sticks around until Draken is released. What is the sticks meta? Well, basically for everything other than Greatsword, Charge Blade, Heavy Bow Gun, and Bow, the Xena Luna or Styx variant of the weapons become pretty much one of, if not the meta weapon choice. Now, we won't be covering all the new builds Luna added in this video. We'll save that for our meta build series. First, let's briefly cover the weapon classes that Luna's weapons did not improve. So for Greatsword, nothing beats the gas powered stick. End of story, we still use it even on console since it was released. Its numbers are tuned way too high and nothing else competes. Charge Blade. Nothing beats Diablos. The numbers are tuned too high with how true raw focused CB damage is. Even the patch 2.0 nerfs to CB raw scaling didn't change this. In fact, they made the gap between the Diablos Charge Blade and its next biggest competitor even bigger. Bow. Blaspo sucks. The damage is terrible and you don't really even gain any benefit from running it versus an elemental bow. Now the Styx bow can be used for a CC bow build since Spare Shot does work on bow coatings. However, you have to slot in so many coating decos to make it work. And on top of that, the extra coatings almost never result in an extra sleep or para. If you bring the 20 coatings plus the 10 combines onto a hunt, you have 30 total coatings. Status thresholds scale too sharply for the extra 7.5 coatings on average to do anything. Landing 30 coatings versus 37.5 coatings doesn't result in an extra status almost every single time. Heavy Bowgun. This one requires a bit more unpacking, so the Bagel Luna Heavy Bowgun is just bad. There are better options for every ammo type it loads. The Nergi Luna Heavy Bowgun is interesting. If you didn't get the Glutton or Horn, then it's the next best spread option. It also has decent sticky ammo. That means you can play a hybrid KO spread build, which can be fun, but not efficient. And who needs fun when you have big, juicy damage numbers? <coughs> The Xeno Luna Heavy Bowgun is a decent generalist heavy bowgun because it loads so many goddamn ammo types. And is the best slicing heavy bowgun in the game, but unfortunately slicing sucks. And no, it is not a good cluster heavy bowgun. The built-in spare shot makes it seem like it's a good choice for clusters, but it is a trap. The issue is that the Xeno Luna Heavy Bowgun has way too low a roll to compete as a cluster gun. When fully augmented for damage, which is pretty standard on cluster guns, the Xeno Luna has a 210 true roll, while the Dark Devourer, the Joe Heavy Bowgun, has 255. That is a 45 true roll difference. So that means a Xeno Luna Heavy Bowgun set with Attack Boost 7 and Peak Performance 3 would hit 251 true roll. This means that a naked Dark Devourer build will deal more damage than a nearly optimal damage-based Xeno Luna Heavy Bowgun set. A common argument is that a Xeno Luna build has more build flexibility, but this is blatantly untrue. A Dark Devourer set with Spare Shot and full defensive skills still deals more damage than a damage-focused Xeno Luna Heavy Bowgun set. 
pretty much the only good use I found for it is matching it up with a four piece guild cross armor set for the great luck set bonus, which I use pretty much exclusively to farm vouchers when greeting the gluttons around while watching anime. So which weapon should you get? For longsword, lance, hammer, insect glaive, sword and shield, and switch axe, the six weapon variant is one of, if not the, meta option. This is what the six meta set looks like. Yes, we know, that is a lot of attack decos. The Styx meta is actually the most deco-hungry meta in Monster Hunter World to date, and it's pretty painful. These generally come down to protective polish builds versus razor sharp builds using Styx. Basically, if you manage to not hit blue on your protective polish build because you kill the monster fast enough, then it is better than a Styx build. However, the 60 hits of white on the Styx variant does win out otherwise. For Dual Blade, Styx is the new best blast option for matchups like Nergigante. Styx and Ruin are strong wide gunlance options. However, they're outclassed by level 4 gunlances from Katie if you can get them. Hunting Horn gets a nice addition with Blaze. Top tier EFR with an excellent fodder combo for building recitals. Styx is alright, but the lack of attack up extra large is a problem. For Light Bowgun, literally everyone is good. Sticks is the best at Water and Thunder. Combined with the built-in Spare Shot, this makes it the new standard for shredding Katie's Mantle. In addition, it's also the best at Sleep and Slicing Ammo, and one of the best Pierce. Unfortunately, Pierce and Slicing both kinda suck. As for Blaze, it is the best at Para and Ice Ammo, as we mentioned earlier, and also the second best at Fire Ammo, third best at Normal 2 Rapid Fire, and the best at Poison Ammo matchups like Xeno or Leggy. Built in Guts doesn't hurt either. Ruin is the best Normal 2 Rapid Fire option if you did not get the R8 shot like Bowgun from KT. When Draken is released, Sword and Shield, Insect Glaive, and Switch Axe get top tier options with the Ruin variants, in case you want to get ready for that. Finally, we have her armor. All of it is viable, so just make it all. If you want to prioritize which pieces you get with your limited resources, then Chest is number one. It's used with current PC sets all around and is very common in current console sets. Legs, waist, and arms see use in certain builds, mostly because they're the most slot efficient pieces that PC has at the moment. Head is very situational. It's good if you want to get a Vade extender, but efficiency wise, other helmets are just better. On bow, for example, it's questionable whether a Vade extender is actually a good thing or not. It does give you more leniency on dodging attacks, but it also messes with your distancing for power shots, which is a big deal because they are your big damage moves. Power style shots deal over twice the damage of rapid shots at the same level. Speaking of bow, let's discuss Stamina Cap Up briefly. So Stamina Cap Up is not as great as it may first seem. When you run the max 50% stamina reduction, it gives you an extra 3 dash dances at the very beginning of the hunt, which is very nice. But if you play aggressively and manage stamina well for damage uptime, you never regen back to max stamina during the hunt. This means that you get those extra 3 dash dances at the start of the fight only. Now, with the armor pieces that PC currently has, the trade-off is about 5-7% to affinity to run stamina cap up. This is arguably worth it, however, as more efficient pieces become available, the gap becomes larger and then the stamina cap up isn't really justifiable anymore. Alright, that about does it guys! If you learned anything new, hit the like button! We also made a Discord server, the Mathalos Nest, where you can find other like-minded hunters. You can check me out on Twitch, where I stream almost every day. We're currently working on a Charge Blade video for our meta build series, so if you want to be notified when that comes out, hit the subscribe button and check the bell icon. And as always, thank you for the support. We wouldn't be doing this without you guys. Happy hunting, hunters! We'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.